So here's how I do the brakes on a BMW. Uh, get a 7mm Allen wrench on an air ratchet is nice. Pull the wheel off. 17mm wheel bolts. So just zip, 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 take those off, set them aside. The wheel doesn't come off good. Turn around backwards, kick it like a mule. It'll come off. Take some anti-seize, especially the ones that didn't come off very easy. Go around the hub. And then next time it will. Take your pry bar out of two. Take the short one. Pry up on the retainer here. Give it a little wiggle wiggle if you need to. Take a screwdriver, another one. Pry it off. So I'm just prying between the tap portion of the brake rotor and the clip. I reach behind here, pull off the little caps that cover the Allen wrench bolts. Um, take your air ratchet. And then uh, what's that? Or you can do this before or after doing that. Get down in here so that you're prying against the most inner part. You don't want to pry on the face and create a ding. Um, but just pry it just a little bit. These are down to the metal, so I'm having to push really hard to maintain traction. If you get a little bite in there, then it's easy to just get in there and manhandle it a little bit. And you can get as much as you can. Sometimes you can get all that you need in terms of compression from getting that out. So then I take the brake pads, pull the one off of here. Seriously, can you get any closer to being metal to metal without ripping up the rotor? Look at that thing. It's just gone. Slap that back up in the caliper that you balance on top here. Take your two pry bars, stick them in there. And uh, just use these like opposing wedges or whatever. So when you get those done, take your one, give it a whack, whackity schmackity. You need to take these. Be careful on the inner one. On the front left and on the back right on a BMW, you've got sensors in them. So gently work the sensor out. Or you can pull the sensor before if you're planning ahead. That's probably the best thing to do. I just can't believe the sensor didn't make contact. I was wondering if it was rigged and set aside on this one. So anyway, you set those aside, you take your brake pad, take your old one, look at where it's making contact with the caliper, and then see how it's around here. Tap on it with your disc brake quiet, or your silicone grease. You can either lube them, or you can glue them. I tend to glue them. Now that I know that I did them. <laughs> uh, pull out your pins, get your silicone grease, and grease these up, especially because the inner one with the sensor didn't get worn out, but the outer one did. I know that these aren't wearing evenly or properly. Take your other pad. See like this, I can see where it's making contact there. Tap, bang, squish, bam, boom. Get that done, throw it in. And then you take this and put it back over into place. You can move your sensor out of the way by unbuckling the uh, little cap for the bleeder screw. Hold it up in there like that. Push in on your pin from behind until it takes in. Start it by hand. Do the same thing with the other one. So that one's done. as is this one. You take your sensor. Sometimes you want to put the clip in first and then the sensor. Sometimes you can click them in together. I'll give you a little close up of what that looks like. And of course you're not going to see a dang thing. There you can kind of see through there. So that's how the sensor goes. That's the brake cap thing. The brake cap thing. That's a bleeder screw cap. Sometimes I put low effort into my vocabulary. The vocabulary is there, but I don't know. Sometimes I just don't feel like using it. So you take this, um, put it into place, 
and uh, take one of your pry bars and I want to pull that down a little first. So basically just put these outer portions in first and then push it in. You can put it in with your thumbs. If your thumbs aren't strong enough, you can take a pry bar and pull on the caliper. Bring this to meet it halfway. It's not one of these relationship things where one person does all the work or you just have it from one side. Pull one side, the other side, they come together. Beautiful things happen. And that's how babies are made. Just kidding. Now here's how you do the brakes. Now that I've done this and expanded the calipers and everything, if I jump in this and go to drive it, guess what's going to happen when I push on the brakes? Nothing! Aside from the brake lights coming on. You have to pump the brakes to get it to squeeze and get the travel back. Your master cylinder will um, close the pressure on that and then you'll have brakes again. Be sure when you tighten the wheel back on that you tighten it in the star pattern. Go this side and then the opposite side. I could choose to go here or here. doesn't matter. This has to be the opposite. But once I choose here, then I have to do this one next and then I have to do this one next. See, it's just like drawing a star. So, And that makes it so that it stays on well, so that it tightens down evenly. If you tighten something down crooked and it binds, bam! Now it won't tighten down on this side. You see how that works? Your wheel's the same way. So you tighten one side, then the other side, and all the way around, and it's nice and flat and tight, and you're safe and your wheel doesn't fall off. If you like this video, be sure to click subscribe. I'll do a lot more videos like this. Check out the other ones on my channel. Uh, click like if you liked it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Or if you want to say thank you, I always love getting thank yous in the comments. So thanks for watching my video. Cheers. All right, now that you have the caliper off, uh, what I like to do is I like to take the old brake pads. I've already expanded this one, but I'll show you just for demonstration purposes. I'm actually filming this before pulling the caliper off the other side. I just decided I wanted to do a video. Um, but basically, you see these pry bars, what I do is I take them and I put them so that they oppose each other. When you have the old brake pads in, uh, very seldom do you ever find a caliper that this isn't wide enough to spread. Don't breathe the dust, that's bad at you know, unhealthy stuff. So anyway, and then you take the other ones off. Now, say you have your uh, pads, you pull them off and you take a look at them from profile. See, these are almost down to the metal. There's very little, if any, pad material left on there. As a BMW, so you'll have a sensor that fits into here. The sensor is best to put in at the very end. There's a window on the back side where you can put the sensor in. Um, incidentally, the sensors can be rebuilt. Um, if you take the old sensor out, you'll see two little wires, little copper wires. If you put a bead of solder that connects the two of them, that solder is a perfect thing to put on there because that solder will touch the ground and actually make the sensor last longer. The sensor's made out of uh, this brake pad material with the uh, copper wires inside of it. So anyway, um, what was I gonna tell you? If you, these are really even, these are perfect. But say one of them's thicker than the other side. Um, if it's on the inboard side, it could be just a bad design if it's on the piston side. But especially if the outboard side wears out faster than the inboard, uh, or basically the two finger side faster than the piston side, then these pins are worn out. Um, like either this is deteriorated to where it's binding, or more likely it just needs to have some dielectric silicone um, or some kind of silicone based grease put on them. If you use moly or uh, petroleum based grease, the heat will actually cause them to bind and you'll do more harm than good. So get a good silicone based grease, grease them up, and then you'll be in great shape. Um, when you go to put these back on, what I like to do is I like to use uh, disc brake quiet. It helps to make the disc. Uh, pads so that they don't vibrate and chatter as much. What I'll do is I'll lay this next to the new one. I wish they'd quit calling me, man. And I'll just go around it with this. And then the other one, I'll just, you know, basically the same thing. If you set them next to each other, it's as easy as tracing. You can just go over and put them in place. When you put these in, make sure to put in the piston side first. And that in and then you'll have plenty of room to put the other one in. The other one on a BMW just stick in uh, like that on an X3 or an X5 or whatever 
uh, do a close up so you can see. You just slide it in like that with the thing. Then when you go to put the caliper back on, make sure that you push your hands in far enough to where they're out of the way. When you unbolt it, they'll be like this, and you go to put it on and they'll block it. You won't be able to get it put on. And slide them back out of the way, do yourself a favor. And then you just take it and set it up in there, just like that. When you set it in, take your finger back here and slide the bolt in and wiggle it around and you'll feel it catch. And then just start it in by hand and then follow it up with an impact uh, ratchet. I guess that's not an impact, it's just an air ratchet. Did you see on uh, Eric the Car Guy's video, he did one for the tool show, I think it was down in Florida, and he showed that air ratchet by Ingersoll Rand that was an actual impact ratchet for doing like harmonic balancer bolts and stuff. That thing was sick. Check out his video. Eric the Car Guy, or on ericthecarguy.com. It's pretty cool. I hope this video was helpful to you. Uh, maybe you learned a couple new things. The one other thing that I'd say is that when you go to put the caliper on and put these in, it's a lot easier um, if you have these uh, seated where they go and then use a pry bar, same way that we used to take it off. Pry it up and in, and then just kind of work the pry bar this way. If you go like that, they just click right in. It makes it a lot easier. I've had people try to do their own brakes. And don't forget your little caps that go in the back side to cover up these Allen bolts so they don't get full of crud. It also makes the grease last longer too. Um, but I've had people that were doing their brakes that got stuck. They couldn't put that little uh, clip back in. And so they had to pay me to come out and do it. So uh, that's the trick. That's how you do it. Use a pry bar. So, hope you liked the video. If you did, click subscribe. If you already did, you're awesome. I love you guys. Um, if you want to click thumbs up, that'll help other people to find it more easily. And it'll make it more searchable. And uh, cheers. Thanks for watching.